God bless you. Pray God. Praise God. Pray you all had a great day. Amen. Just thankful. Praise God for another day's journey. One that was not promised. Amen. Just excited about our lesson tonight. Praise God. Excited about what God is doing. Amen. Through what we're together doing here. It's just a blessing. Praise God. When we come together. God bless you, sister Yafet. Pray you had a great day today. Amen. 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 Share it out, sis, as we get started. Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, Sister Robin. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. For making my mask. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Amen. Sister Margaret. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Erica. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Go on and share out with others. Amen. Um, I pray that people are uh, my class stay together. This, we gonna call this a class, Amen. Bless you, Sister Turner, Amen. Good to see you on tonight. Praise God. I pray that we stick together, Amen. Through this, um, you know, I've really been praying, Amen, about um, this class, pray, Amen, about love, Amen, because this is so critical, Amen. And as we go back, God bless you, preacher. God bless you, brother Ames. Good to hear from you today. Thank you for receiving my call earlier. Praise God. Amen. It's going to be critical, praise God, as we go back into the ministries, amen, and we go back into the household of faith, that we're there, praise God, with love. God bless you, uh, Sister Tiffany, praise God. We're going to have to go back, amen, with that heart. God bless you, Sister Carter. Amen. Share out with those, uh, your friends and all right now, praise God, as we prepare to go into our lesson today. It's going to be critical, amen, that we go into the... God bless you, Deacon Spinner. God bless you, Sister Flood. Bless each one of you, amen. Share, share, amen, with others, praise God, as we prepare for our lesson. It's going to be critical, praise God, that we, amen, are, are ready. We are ready, praise God, when this uh, pandemic is over, amen, that we can be prepared to go into the household of faith, in, in love like God, never, like we never loved before. God bless you, stuff. God bless you, preaching, brother Saunders. Praise God. Amen. God bless you, Magnum. Amen. Praise God. We got to be prepared, praise God, um, as ever before. Amen. To be ready. Amen. To bless and bless others. Praise God. My sister, um, sister uh, Angie, my sister Angie says she's coming on. Amen. And she said, I keep, she keep coming on, but I don't see her. God bless you, anointed Elder Burford. Praise God. God bless Sister Mays. Let's go to work. Praise God. There's enough of us on. Amen. We're working from there. Praise God. Amen. Those, amen, that are not there, share it out so we can get others on. Now listen to this. Absolutely. God bless you, my nephew. Praise God. He's been on there, too. You've been on there, amen, almost every day. Praise God. Give my niece a kiss. God bless you, Sister Tiffany. Praise T. Sister T, praise God. Amen. Listen. Let's um, share it out. Look, we got to be a good class now. I want you to stick with me through this love. Amen. God bless you, Sister Patty. I want y'all to stick with me through this series right here on this next seven days. I've really been in the Lord about this, praise God. It's critical, amen, as we prepare, amen, to go back into the household of worship, praise God. As we could, we get ready, praise God, to go in, we're going to have to be to, to, totally focused, amen, with love and unconditional type. Amen. So, you know, it's, it's ironic, praise God, that God has given us tools. He's worked with us on the promises in a great way. 21 days of telling us all his love, knowing that we can live on his promises and live 100%. He's equipping us, whether you know it or not, giving us all the tools, amen, so we can be prepared to be a great blessing to others. How you doing there, Angie? That was my sister, Angie. Praise God. Amen. Bless her. She's from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Also, somebody asked me, amen, I said Peru yesterday. Yes. That um, the family that's in Peru, that's the country of Peru, amen, yes, that's where they were, it was not a city, amen, it was a, 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 a country called Peru, and they were in with us last night, amen, so we got to be ready, it's going to absolutely be ready, God bless you, brother Alex, praise God, bless you, sister Braxton, praise God, it's time for me to pay forward again, I haven't forgot, praise God, amen, I will, I believe in praying forward, sister, sister Val has a great, uh, Restaurant, praise God, that feeds well, amen, amen, so amen, we're going to pay forward, somebody and get some free meals, amen, we have intentions of doing that this week, amen, praise God, listen to this, it's critical, praise God, as we prepare, praise God, to go back into doors, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to flush, that's going to come in, they're going to come in, amen, with a, with a newfound desire to know more about God, they're going to come in, praise God, with a newfound 
wish, amen, for God to be in their lives. Amen. And we're going to have to have some unconditional love. And it's amazing as God has given this, this lesson right now because it's helping us. Now, I pray, praise God, on last night, we really touched about the brokenness of ourselves, um, the ability, praise God, to release some of those hurts so that we can love right. And I have really been praying all day, praise God, for some that may be, amen, going through that. You know, it's a hard thing. And I pray that some of you, praise God, determine that, amen, by the end of this uh, this seven days of this, if you didn't get delivered last night, I decree, praise God, I pray for some, amen, that would be delivered, amen, last night from this, amen, because some of us has been hurt. Some of us carry some brokenness and hurt and haven't learned to be able to love unconditionally. But I pray, praise God, that you was released last night through the lesson. If you wasn't, if you hadn't had a chance to listen to the lesson, go back and listen to it from last night. It'll be a blessing to your soul. Amen. Go back and listen to it because it's talking about being that brokenness, amen, of what we have to deal with, amen. So praise God, some of us have some bitterness and we try to love and we try, but we got a lot of things going on there. So follow that. But also, praise God, there's going to be some new, there's going to be floodgates of people coming in, wanting to know God. It's going to be our responsibility, praise God, to be there, to love them in unconditionally. We got to have some true love of Jesus, amen. We got to be able to look up and say, um, you know, we're going to be looking up and he says, um, Nicodemus, I'm going to eat with you. Uh, Zachariah, he, all those, he didn't care who they was. He dealt with sinners. He dealt with those that others would not have anything to deal with. Amen. Those that people couldn't tolerate, he loved on. And he, guess what? It was me. I'm one of them. So we know, praise God, we're going to have to be able to do this. So great lesson tonight, praise God. We're going to cover this. And I want y'all to stick with me, please, praise God. Please stick with me throughout this a little bit. Um, don't Don't leave me. Um, I know it's going to be a little tight on some of this lesson, praise God, but I guarantee you it's going to bless your soul. Amen. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians, praise God, 3, 13th chapter, praise God, the fourth and fifth verse. Amen. We're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to bless there. I guarantee you, praise God. So I need my class to stick with me. God bless you there, Deacon Davis. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, Nadine. Praise God. And Nadine and uh, Alexander. Praise God. Good to see you on board with us. Praise God. Amen. Missionary Burgess, Missionary uh, Mays. Good for all of you there. Praise God. Share it. Amen. Let's have a share party. We have 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 4, and the 5th verse. Then we'll slip to the 13th verse. Amen. And it says, um, I, and I'm going to start at the first verse. I mean, because it's too powerful. Amen. I'm watching my time. I'm trying to be very attentive to that. Amen. It says, for I, I could sp well, I could speak with all the languages on earth and of angels, but do not have, do not love others. I'm just like a noise. We're going with clangling cymbals. In other words, it's saying if I praise God can speak in all the different languages of all the earth and speak even the languages of angels. But if I don't have love, amen, I'm just a, t a tingling cymbal. I don't have anything going. And if I give prophecy, amen, and understand all of God's secrets, amen, and knowledge of God, amen, and can even move a mountain, but don't have love, amen, I'm still nothing I should be. That's in the second verse. And if I can give everything to the poor and even sacrifice my body, but praise God, don't have love, amen, it has gained me nothing, amen. But our scriptures of the night, praise God, is from four and five. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealousy or boastful or proud or rudeful, amen. Is that all right? So it's telling us, praise God, that we have got to love most of all. Amen. We got to start loving more than anything. Quail, good to see you on today. God bless your anointed sister Greenly, of Vezis Greenly. We have got to love unconditionally. Let me explain something to you. Here is where we're going to break it down. Now, last night we talked pretty hard because, see, some of us say we love, but we got to love like Jesus loved. We can't love on our own terms. We got we to gotta scratch the definition that we have of love. Because, see, our definition of love is not the same definition that God has for love. Can I, can I get one amen? See, our love, praise God, is there as long as someone else loves us. Uh-huh. I may be honest. Um, there's people, praise God, I loved, and as soon as they stopped doing right by me, I fell out of love with them. I'm not only did I fall out of love with them, amen, I stopped dealing with them. Come on, someone. Somebody tell the God's honest truth. Amen. We have that kind of love. That is a natural kind of love. Now, remember, we're supposed to be telling the types of love tonight. 
I want y'all to put them up there, praise God, as the lesson goes on. So praise God, we get to that point, praise God, that we love only, amen, to a level of where we feel love back, where we feel we want to, amen. Sometimes we'll just love something, love someone for a period of time. But this love that God is talking about, praise God, is truly different. It is absolutely different, praise God. And it says, though, I speak with, with all these languages. So in other words, every gift you've got, every anointed ability you have means nothing if you don't have love. Amen. That's why, praise God, amen, he says, did not cast out devils in your name. Did not, I, I did not do this in your name. Did not do that in your name. He said, I know you not because you didn't show the love, praise God, that you should have shown. You didn't have that unconditional love for your brother. Amen. Praise God. Anybody with me? Praise God. So that can have us praise God in a bad place. Now I'm going to talk about love. I'm going to break love down a little bit. Love suffers long. See, long suffering, praise God, is something that we have to do. Love will endure for a long time. When you love someone, praise God, you're going to have to, praise God, be willing. When we love on the people that come, we're going to love on them, praise God. They're going to be messing up. How many of you know some are going to come in and mess up today and come back tomorrow? The worst thing I ever want to hear, and I don't like to hear, and I refuse to hear, and I rebuke anybody that said, oh, yeah, how long are they going to stay this time? Amen. The devil is alive. At least they came. Amen. It doesn't matter how many times they fall or how many times they get back up. We celebrate every time they get back up and hope that we can, instead of saying that, we should be praying to see, praise God, what we can do. Come on, help me out. Somebody should help me out. What we can do to love them, to encourage them to stay. Amen. Instead of trying to bet and question how long they're going to be here, wonder how much we can do to help them stay here. Somebody help me out, praise God. We should never want anybody to go back. So love is enduring, long suffering. It takes a long time. Let me explain to you why, praise God. Second Peter 3 and 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Listen to this. As some count slackness. Listen to this. So in other words, God is not slack concerning his promises. As people count slackness. But is long suffering towards us. But is long suffering towards us towards us. Now, you're not going to be honest, praise God, but I'm going to be honest. He has been long suffering towards me. Just me. I'll have, I need one, two, amen. I just me. He has been long suffering for me. I have not always, I have been walking this day for over 30 some odd years, but I ain't been doing it all 100%. I have had some errors. I've had some faults. Oh, yeah. Well, the preacher did good because it's made me a better preacher. It made me know and understand, praise God, the pitfalls that you can go through and the struggles you can have, praise God. And sometimes when you don't do all you know to do, amen. But praise God, God has been long suffering with me. He's been there for me, praise God, when I didn't know how to be there for myself. Talk to me, praise God. How many of you know he's been long suffering with you? So that means, praise God, we have got to be long suffering for others. We got to, amen, not just look at people when they walk through and say, oh, they ain't real. Praise God, you got to help and pray for them to be real. Amen. They can come in there with a, with a fake facade, but we got to love them, praise God, and hope that we can love them enough to put one nugget in them to make them want to stay. Come on, someone. It's not about, praise God, whether, amen, they are, amen, they're at 100%. We don't care if they're 100%. We all hear something. Somebody help me out. If you didn't come with no sin, I want to know your name. Please, come on. I'm going to meet you right now without a mask on because you're perfect. I'm going to meet you, praise God, not worry, not at all about getting no virus because if you didn't have no sin when you got saved, I need to know you. I want to hug you. Matter of fact, I want you to breathe on me because you got something, praise God. Either you are a liar or you got something I need. <laughs> all right, that's not part of the lesson, but it makes me feel good. Praise God. So praise God. We're long suffering. Be long suffering for people. When they come back, we're going to love them unconditionally. We're going to love them. Praise God. Don't talk about them stinking. Don't talk about what the clothes they wear. We can't change their clothes until we, the, the Lord changed their spirit. Don't you know, praise God, I'll never forget. Listen to this. I'm going to share this. I'm watching my time. Praise God. I don't want to run out of time because it's a good lesson tonight. We had a sister, praise God, when we first opened the church 19 years ago. Praise God. This last Sunday. Easter Sunday, uh, April, uh, 2000, April 16, 2002. We opened the church, praise God, amen. This sister came in. She came in, amen. She come in, looked like she just came from the club. Her dress, she had a, one of those little mini skirts almost showing her butt, had earrings all around both her ears and her nose and her lip. 
This woman was just jacked up from the floor. I mean, just dressed, halter stuff on. She was dressed like she just came from the club. She come to the church, wouldn't say nothing to nobody, sit down, got a word, got up. The cab be waiting on her at 1 o'clock every Sunday. She get back in the cab and leave. She did this for about a month. A month or two, she just kept coming the same way. Looked like she just coming straight from the streets, and the cab would pick her up. But by and by, amen, you start seeing changes in this sister. Start seeing a change. The next thing you know, praise God, because we loved her, never said nothing out of the way to her, let her come just the way she was, gave her the word, gave her the highs, let her know we loved her. Amen. That don't you know pretty soon that sister was dressing right? That sister moved all that stuff. And guess what? She wasn't coming from like she was coming from um, the club the night before. She didn't look like it. And guess what? That sister got saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Listen, the first one to totally get delivered in the church. And amen. Not only that, was the first one to die in the church. You can't tell me God ain't good. God made, brought her in, made her right, equipped her, and then took her home. <laughs> Now, I don't care what nobody else say. That was a praise report all by itself. Because, see, when we accept people just the way they are and allow God to have his way, that's true love. So be long-suffering. Love does not envy. Mm, Uh-oh. I told you I was going to break this down a little bit. Love does not envy. Envy is one of, the, uh, one of those sins, praise God, that's most dangerous of all sins. One of the most dangerous of all sins. It accomplishes nothing, but it hurts a lot. Envy is a terrible thing. Come on, somebody. Oh, I know. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't going to hear it. I know I might as well be quiet. Envy pays God because a lot of us envy folk. We shouldn't. I sell, I'm going to tell you something. You know, me being a pastor, praise God, when I see some of these large and great ministries, T.D. Jakes, and they're doing so much, and amen, you see um, you see uh, uh, how, amen, I had a desire, praise God, to one day do a university ministry and teach, give people free college, amen, I see up there at Liberty, I go past Liberty every day, I have to go down 460, amen, two, at least twice a day if I go to Lynchburg from home, and I see, praise God, that, 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 I watch that ministry grow, and I look at it, praise God, and just want God to give me one building so I can teach, praise God, and get people, amen, that education free, and I look over there, praise God, and they got mega buildings building it every day, amen, you know it could very easily for me to be envy, you know, one time, I used to be a little jealous with that envy, but I used to celebrate anyway, because I was learning, praise God, at the time, that I had to celebrate, praise God, those things that God God was doing. Amen. Whether I felt a little jealous or envy, I had to rebuke that thing because I was celebrating what God was doing. Y'all ain't catching this. And what we have to do is keep celebrating until that thing break from us. Now, I celebrate anybody that's doing greatness in God, but it ain't always been that way. You got to be careful. Envy can hurt, especially, listen to this, especially, check this out, when there's one-on-one kind of a situation, when you can attack someone, when you can be there with them, praise God. Do not envy. Let me tell you what envy, oh, somebody says a small sin. Ain't nobody got to know about it, but let me show you what envy does. This is what I looked up, praise God. I still got time. Envy murdered Abel. Yes, it did. Cain and Abel. Envy murdered Abel. Somebody give me an amen. Write it down. Genesis 4th chapter 3 through 8. Cain killed his brother because of envy. Yes, it did. Uh-huh. Somebody say amen. Envy enslaved Joseph. Joseph, praise God, in Genesis 37 and 11 through 38, his brothers envied him. Come on, someone. Genesis 37 11, that they got him enslaved. Envy. Listen to this. Envy put Jesus on the cross. Uh Uh-oh. Y'all want to hear that. Matthew 27 and 18. Now, mind you, God used these envy for his good. Now, I'm not saying it, but it was envy that started the whole situation. Can I get an amen out here today? So praise God. We got to be careful, praise God. Be careful when you feel yourself and acknowledge it. Come on, someone. When we go back to church, we got to acknowledge. We got to break those jokes. We can't be envy of somebody because we think they pretty. Uh-oh. Because y'all women something else. Uh-oh. Don't, don't, don't all of y'all check out at the same time. Please love on me. Y'all can be really harsh to each other. Brothers, we can kind of hold it down. But sisters, y'all can attack each other with the look. <laughs> oh, come on, help me out. Somebody just say, man, tell the truth. You got a way of looking at each other. It's like a poison look. Envy is a little situation. Uh, her little dress. No, that's a size 12. That's not little. Or oh, that little car. No, that's a that's a 2,000 ton car. How in the world are you going to call that? That's a 2,000, two ton, you know, 
I don't know what you're going to call the two-ton car little, that little bit of this. Come on, somebody. Come on, tell the truth, because you're, you're downplaying with envy what God is doing. Somebody talk to me. We got to break that thing because the enemy wants us to keep that thing to a point that he has some authority. But you got to understand when we go back, praise God, we're not going to let envy have his room. We're not going to kill anybody. We're not going to let anybody get killed. Come on, someone. We're going to rebuke somebody. We're going to be able to tell our sister, uh-uh, we ain't going for that anymore. No, no. Because we're coming back. We're going to love people, praise God, whether they got nothing or they got something. We still going to love them. Come on, somebody. Whether they got nothing or something. You got to love them. Come on, some. Are you with me? Amen. So not, not on that. Love, love is not prideful. Love is not puffed up. Love does not parade itself. Does not parade itself. Love is an action word. It's not a word, praise God, that you just want to be seen to everybody see. See, when you want to show love to everybody else, to someone else, you that's just parading it. Love is secret. You do things with people, whether well, people see it or not. God bless you, Pastor Codwell. Amen. From Maryland. We thank God for you being there. Thank you, First Lady Walker. Amen. For Rono, praise God. Amen. We thank God for each one of you being there with us. Praise God. Amen. Listen, love, praise God. Amen. Is not paraded. You don't parade around. Look what I've done. Amen. This is what I've done for them. No, when you do something, you're doing it. Praise God. Straight out of your heart. You're doing it. Praise God in secret. You're not doing it to be amen. Notice. Praise God. Because it's out of love. So you don't parade love, praise God. You can do things anonymously and nobody never know who do it. God knows because that's who you're trying to celebrate. Somebody help me out. You don't want to be satisfied with a job. You don't need to be celebrated. You just want to do it because it's love unconditionally. And you want to be a blessing because it's in your heart to love that heart. I need somebody. Come on. Y'all not even giving me no whole lot tonight. Y'all not with me because I'm breaking it down. We got to understand this, saints of God, because in the long run, this is what we got to do. When we open these doors, people are going to have to see this out of us. Problem is, let me be honest. Let's be honest. We got some people in the church that, look. Preacher preaching on the anointing, but the pews, people in the pews killing folk. Uh-oh, uh-oh, whoa. You're killing them. The, the pew, pew members killing people. Pastor preaching from the anointing. The pastors up there carrying that word. The anointing is flowing. The music is, is anointed, but the people in the pews killing each other. Come on, killing the new saints, killing them as they come in. Come on, somebody. Oh, y'all don't want to come on. Somebody help me out of here. Be God's honest truth. We killing them, praise God. Somebody help me out. Just come on, say they're killing them. Somebody tried to kill me. God bless you, Quan. How you doing, son? Amen. He's doing well. He's in the shipyard in Norfolk, praise God. Young man just doing well. Come on. How many of you with me? Let's be honest. They killing. And man, looking at them, not rejecting them. That's why, praise God, in living word, I tell them every Sunday, love on the visitors. Don't worry about your sister. You I know you want to say hi to her. You want to talk about her, this, that, and the other. But you go love the one that nobody else is loving on. You go shake the hand of nobody else shake. You tell the leaders, praise God, leaders, that's your responsibility. I can't do it. I'm up here in the pulpit preparing to preach. Your responsibility is to go out there and love them unconditionally. Show that somebody care for them and somebody seeing them walk in here. Come on, someone, that they mean something. Tell the truth, saints of God. We cannot afford to kill them, praise God. We got to love them. The pew is not a murdering stage for you. Because you can't afford to have blood on your hand. I know. I know this class is going to be hard. Some of y'all, come on. I promise tomorrow won't be this hard. I wanted you to be here. Because we got to be, praise God, prepared to love people. So love, praise God, is not puffed up. Love is not puffed up, praise God. It's not selfish, praise God. It's not arrogant, praise God. We don't get the big head, praise God. You know, we're not like that. When we got love, praise God, we don't puff it up. We don't get the swolled up head because, yeah, this is me, this is what I can do, and this is all that. We don't put the focus on us. We put it on others and the need of others. Amen. We don't try to always, praise God, be the one out front because God said your gifts will make room for you. If you just do what God told you to do, he'll bless you in, in due time. Come on, somebody, because if God favors you to do something and you do it, you celebrate God for the ability to do it. So, amen. Is that all right? It, it, and listen to this. Love do not behave rude. Uh-uh. Amen. We're kind. Amen. We give my, amen. Listen, I'm going to tell you, Oh God, help me. I, I'm not going to go too far in there, but you got to learn not to be rude to people. And then, I mean, come on, a love. 
you gotta you gotta learn how to formulate your conversation. Well, that's the way I always talk. See, if you've always talked like that, you ain't told to deliver. <laughs> Uh uh, don't 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 turn off. Look, please let me you know let me know all y'all still there. I need everybody. I I seen about fifteen. I seen about fifty names come across. Come on, somebody, give me some amens. Come on, come on, help me out. Don't be mad at me. I'm telling you, God's honest true. Praise God. Love, praise God. Don't talk rude. Love, amen, will formulate his words, amen, even though somebody's provoked you, even though somebody's done something wrong, even though they are so wrong. You got to learn the way you got to say things to people so you can love them unconditionally. Come on, help me out in here, praise God. Is that all right? Come on, I'm all right now. I'm, 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 I'm with you. Is that all right now, praise God? Amen. Romans um, 12 and 9 to 10 said, don't pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong, hold tight to what is good, love each other with genuine affection. Now, that means, praise God, I can love everybody no matter what. I ain't got to love what they're doing. I ain't got to love their stuff. I, that's why every person who's got a significant lifestyle of homosexuality, amen, we know by the word of God, that it doesn't stand right in God's word. But they all are welcome at living word. We'll love them and 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 never mistreat them. Never cite them. Never try to disrespect them. We're going to love them, praise God, and pray that a word of God or a song or something one of the persons in the pew do by showing them love will switch what the devil has brought into their lives and turn it around. Oh, y'all don't hear me because that's what draw me in. Love and kindness draw me in. Amen. We didn't have music when I came through. The church didn't have no, no air conditioning. The church didn't have no music. Amen. But it had love and that's what draw me in. Love in the spirit of God. That's all it took. It wasn't a whole lot of gadgets and beans and bangs. It was about the true genuine feeling I felt. Them people cared about me unconditionally. I was a nobody. Come on, someone. And that's what we got to do. Amen. We got to love. Don't pretend it. Praise God. Have the genuine love for each other. Oh, my God. I'm running all the time. Um, 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 love don't. Oh, I got to get here. Oh, I got to go here. Love do not provoke. Now, I'm going to talk about this. You got to understand. Let me explain something to you. Here's what happened. Now, I'm going to show you this. Let me show you what it'll do. Moses lost the promised land because he tried to provoke those people. God told him to go out there and speak to a rock. He didn't tell him to chastise them. Now go to Numbers 20th chapter, write it down, the second through the 11th verse. Moses, God said, go speak to the rock that it may give them water. That's all God told him to do. Moses went out there. He was frustrated, upset, irritated because they kept complaining, how they kept acting, how they kept doing. And he went out there, praise God, instead of loving on them like God said, he was provoking. He was chastising them, saying every kind of way, praise God. And what happened is that he messed around and hit that rock. He lost, he lost heaven. He lost the promised land because he was disobedient. We got to love, praise God, through people's ways. Come on, someone. And there's another thing, praise God. Amen. You got to love people. Um, you got to most you got to love the most irritating person there is. You got to love that person that irritates you the most. You got to love that person that just really just get on your last nerve. Oh, help me. You got to love that person that you know that's just going to make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. You have to love them. You have to love them. When they know they've done wrong by you. We talked about that last night. You have to love that person, praise God, when everybody else in the church runs from them when they, drive, when they walk up. You got to love that person, praise God, that everybody else has got the worst breath in the church. Come on, someone. You got to love them, praise God, like I had to wash those feet. I'll never forget. Anybody remember, praise God, a living word? No. Amen. We washed feet every first Sunday. And amen, I was a young brother, the youngest there in the church, praise God. I got saved young. And they, I know now that every, every first Sunday, I wind up washing this deacon's feet that looked like they were falling off and it looked like they looked like they, they, they trust me. I can't explain it because I want some of you to eat after I finish. But I had to wash that deacon's feet every time, praise God. 
And I was kind of saying, now this Sunday, I'm not going to wash his feet. I'm going to do whatever I can to avoid watching Deacon such and such feet. They nasty, they ugly, and I have to touch them. Come on, someone. But it looked like every Sunday, every Sunday. Look, one time, praise God, I was so determined not to do it, and he wasn't there, praise God. And I was so grateful. Amen. I looked around the church. He wasn't there. I said, oh, God, praise the Lord. You looked out for me today. Amen. But just before service ended, guess who showed up? He did. <laughs> oh, my God. He showed up with his ugly feet. And guess what happened? Somehow or another, he flopped right down in front of me for me to wash his feet. But I am so glad, listen to this, that I washed his feet. I washed his feet every year for years because it taught me, praise God, to love any way, anyhow, any situation. And you got to understand, there are going to be people that will provoke you, irritate you. Amen. Long suffering is what it's going to take. Is that all right? Amen. I'm down to, amen. I knew I was going to run out of time. But remember, just because Moses acted the way he did, Try to provoke those people. Talk down to them when God didn't do it. Because, see, you can provoke people to anger. You can get upset at people because they've done wrong. And you start provoking them. And you can mess yourself up. Amen. You don't ever want any blood on your own hands. Somebody, oh, y'all not helping me out tonight. I'm the only one learning something. Only one learning something. But then, praise God, it says in the 13th verse, but the greatest of all is love. The greatest is love. Love is the greatest of all. Love is the greatest is all. Listen to this. Love is the greatest because it will continue. And it could continue and it grows. It continues to grow. It even grows. Love grows. See, everything else, praise God, has a termination time. But love can continue to grow. I looked at this, praise God, and this is how I came up with it. When we are in heaven, we ain't going to need faith no more. Because guess what? We don't need hope no more. Because, praise God, they fulfill their purpose. You know why? Because faith, we'll be able to see God face to face. So why we need faith? We already seeing God. So faith don't work this purpose in our lives. Hope, we, because we right there, we don't need Jesus. Jesus, coming to Jesus, we right there, we see him. So we don't need faith and hope. We don't need that anymore because we're right in heaven. But because we're in heaven, we're going to always have love. Oh, help me, someone. We're going to always love, going to love God and love others. Oh, help me. That, I'm just going to be all, I'm just going to tell you the God's honest truth. That's what's going to be in heaven, love. It's going to be love, harmony, praise God, peace, praise God, peace. Y'all not trying to hear me. So, praise God, if you're listening to me, if you understand what I'm saying, we're going to have to prepare ourselves. So, God, massage me, man, man. Last night, we asked for God to deliver us of the hurts. Tonight, we're going to ask God to prepare us to love. Is that all right? That is going to be our prayer, praise God, that God prepare us to love, amen, as people start entering the doors, amen, and let's start preparing now, amen. You got it. maybe, and can I be honest, some of us may have to come back and repent. We may need to repent, praise God, praise God, for how we treated some people because we've allowed some things to irritate us. Anybody with us, praise God? Some of us have, praise God, allowed some people, amen, and some things that we may have to repent. We may not be able to go back and tell them we're sorry or apologize or repent to them, but we can go to God and say, forgive me, God. I realize I was wrong there, but I'll never be wrong again. I want to love correctly by you. Come on, someone. I want this love thing right. Is that all right? I want to be able to love God the way you want me to love. I want peace in my heart. I don't want any hatred. I don't want envy. I don't want any strife, God. I want that kind of agape love that you told me. I don't, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put that out there. Ain't nobody gave me none of the loves yet. All right, listen to it. Here's your nugget for the night. Love will outlive all gifts. Put that on your Facebook. Per Pastor Cam. Love will outlive all gifts. Mm, I, I need some help in that. Love will outlive all gifts. Amen. Come on, sister. I like that. Listen, love will outlive all. You can give me anything. You can give me all. Uh, that's what I'm saying. You can't give your kids something that's, uh, 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 you got to give love. Love means more to me than anything. You give me a gift and walk away, amen, doesn't work. But if I got your love, praise God, it gives forever. Amen. Is that all right, somebody? Somebody say amen to me out there, praise God. Amen. Love will out 
way and outlive all gifts. Amen. That's a lot of information. Praise God. It's four minutes after the hour. Amen. But listen, we have got to praise God. Love will outlive all gifts. Amen. Per Pastor Cam, put it out there. Amen. Because it's the God's honest truth. It will outlive. Amen. All right. God be all heroes. All right. Come on. You got one more, sis. Sis, so you want to give them all there first, uh, Sister Karen Walker. Amen. You're missing one. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Who got the definitions to the one Sister Karen put out there? She's put three of them out there. Praise God. Anybody know what agape love means? Anybody know? Praise God. Somebody want to bless us with that one. Praise God. Amen. We'll work it because we're working this. Amen. All week. We'll be in love for the rest of the week for the next seven days. Um, next uh, six days. We're talking about love. Amen. I love each one. You listen to this. Amen. We love you. Praise God. Love. We love you. Praise God. I really do. Let us pray. We want to praise God, amen, to know that, amen, we are doing what God wants us to do. We want to love right. So we're going to pray, praise God, that we love right. Not by our own standards, but by the love of God. Come on, amen. God be loved. God's love towards us. Amen. Amen. That's all right, sister. Y'all fed. That's correct. Let us go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful for an opportunity to teach once again to your people, God. You know, last night, God, we prayed, God, about the hurts and harm, God, that people have done to us. And it's given us, God, a hard time, praise God, for us to really, God, make it. Sometimes it's hard, God, because we've been hurt so, so much, God. We've been we've been so dealing with some things in our own heart, God, that it's kind of hard for us to love our enemies and love every, our neighbors as ourselves, God. It's getting, it's hard, Lord, but God, we determine, God, that we've been the release of those things. We rebuke, God, every bit of hurt, and we are free from that. We forgive those that have hurt us. But tonight, God, we taught, God, that we've got to learn, we got to love unconditionally. We got to love, God, amen, with no, no if, ands, or buts about it, God. We got to love with every bit of a part of you. We can't love with envy. We can't love with pride. We can't love. We got to love long suffering. We got to have that kind of love that's pleasing unto you, God. So, God, we're asking for your help in the name of Jesus, that the way we carry ourselves, God, as the doors open back up, that we can be unconditionally loved towards others. Let me have that genuine, God be love, God, that when I see someone, I see you. I can see the good in them, not the evil. Help me to look at them, God, and as you see them, not as I see them. Help me to look at them, God, with the spirit, God, in which you would have towards them, not the spirit I have towards them. Help me, God, to be able to bind the spirit of I'm irritated and don't want to be bothered with them and them folks are less than me. Help me, God, to understand, God, it's only because of your grace that I'm even knowledgeable the way I am. I'm not better than anybody, God, because as long as they save, we realize that because the parable of Jesus, where the Pharisee and then the Pope, uh, a broke man went in the church and one was prideful and the other one just said, have mercy on me and the only one that went to heaven was the one that had nothing. God, some of us, praise God, got to realize just because we've been in the church and carry ourselves a certain way don't mean we better than them. We probably headed to hell and the other ones are just struggling, going to make it to heaven. So God, help us, God, in the name of Jesus to change that spirit that when these doors open back up, that we'll be ready to wrap our arms around spiritually to everybody that walk through those doors, loving them unconditionally, no matter what kind of mindset, no matter what they are. Amen. With genuine love. Amen. We want to be able to love them, God, unconditionally. Help me, God, right now. Purge my heart, God. Purge me. Give me the right kind of love as David did in, in Psalms 51. Let me love right, God, as I may love the way you want me to love. God, and I thank you, God, right now. Now deliver me, God. Lord, I repent. Come on, someone. I repent, God, for anyone I ever mistreated. Forgive me, God, if I've ever curated the wrong way because of envy, pride, or jealousy, or anything, God, or if I've just been irritated by them, or if I thought I was better than them, or anything, God, and if I didn't love like you told me to love because of their condition or their way, or God, if I did something wrong, please forgive me and help me, God, in the name of Jesus, never to do it again. In the name of Jesus, bless my life from this day forward, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, God, be acceptable. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, favor me, God, to know how and what to do. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. God, for who you are in our lives. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to just come together every day. We thank you for keeping us protected and shielded as we have anointed our house on last Sunday, God, knowing that our house is covered with your anointed blood. And God, we anointed them, God, knowing that you're taking care of us. Now, God, we ask that you continue to bless as we go on through this virus thing, God, and all this epidemic, God, and all of us being housebound. We ask that you favor God in our homes. Help us, God, to do the things that's required. Exercise, God, and read our word and, and give Get into our families, God. Meditate and do those things we need to do. Help us, God, most of all, God, to know you better. Now, bless, God, those uh, the health care workers. We always will speak over them, God, because we want, God, in the name of Jesus, for them to be safe, God, and be 
able to take care of those in the hospital. Bless those in the grocery store. Bless those in the service stations. All those places I take for granted that I drive up to and someone's there to help me. I ask that you protect those people. Loads and all those different places. Every time you go, someone is there, God. So bless them, God, and protect them, God, as they're working. Amen. As I spoke to one today and I said, ma'am, be safe. And she almost gave me too much money, God. And I said, no, I don't want you to come up short. Here's your money back. She said, yeah, because I need this job. And she's out there, praise God, in the public, God. And her face is right there. And I had the mask on, but God, she was just exposed to anything. So God, those are people, God, that's needing you to bless and protect. Now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, favor everyone right now, God, that is dealing and struggling with this uh, virus. God, bless their lives, strengthen their bodies, God. We ask that you bring down, come on, someone, let's speak it right now, this uh, level of, uh, of people dying. We do not want it to keep rising. We, come on, let's pray right now. We speak, God, by tomorrow that it be less dying. Come on, someone. When we look at the news, we want to see less have died, God, that the curve is going down. We speak it, we touch and agree right now, God, that you can do it in the name of Jesus right now. We speak it into the atmosphere that you will change the, come on, someone. We speak it right now, God, that you'll make a difference right now that it'll be going down. Come on, someone, starting tonight, God, by in tomorrow, God, by noon time, by news, the time news is tomorrow, we'll know that it's changed in the name of Jesus. Now, Heavenly Father, continue to bless our elderly, bless them, make sure they have all the things they need, God, send somebody by to check on them, let us love our neighbors by checking on our elderly, God, making sure they are taken care of, and most of all, God, keep us in your perfect will. Now, God, as we depart from each other, knowing this lesson, God, that we got to love correctly, we can have every gift and every bout of money, but God, if we don't have love, we're still headed not to the right place. We're headed to hell. So God, we thank each one of you, God. We thank you, God, for all that you've done. Now, Lord, if we depart from each other, God, but never from your presence. In Jesus' name, name, amen and amen. Listen, I love every one of you. God knows I do, and there's absolutely not a thing you can do about it. I love you, my sister. Praise God. In Alabama, stay safe. Amen. I love each one of you. I love what you're doing. Praise God. Amen. I still want to see every one of the definitions. Amen. Of love. Come on, saints. You've got to be able to do a little study on your own. That's giving you knowledge. Amen. Go look up it. It's not hard to find. All I got to do is Google it in your phone. You can find it. I want every definition of love out here. We're going to do it every day. Praise God. Until someone get them all. I love every one of you. God knows I do. And there's absolutely not a thing you can do about it. See you tomorrow. Love you. Love you, Sister Ray. Uh, Kingdom Ambassadors Ministry. Love you all. Bye.